Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Today I have Neeraj Pardesi, and he reached out to me on Instagram and wanted to have a conversation, wanted to link up, and it seems like he's a man who is out on the internet inspiring others to become as best a version of self as possible. Perfection is a word he uses a lot, and he talks a lot about energy, maybe talking with God, and being yeah a good person, and so... Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, brother, for having me on. As soon as I saw your page for the first time, I knew I had to talk to you. Even if we weren't going to get on the show, I just want you to be a friend. You got a great vibe. I like how you speak and the message you put out. And somebody like myself, I had a huge porn addiction in the past, too. I know exactly what it's like to go through the phases. And I'm just happy that we're out here doing the work that saved us. That's really it. It's crazy how our, our struggle became like... What is allowing us to be a savior now? The same things that hurt oh, us sure. are now helping others. And I think that message we both align on. So I'm happy to be here and have this talk. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, I heard a quote from a guy named Soul of Jarrett. I'm not sure if mm -hmm. you know who that is. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had him on my show like a year ago, pretty much exactly. And he said something in this episode that said, if you don't know what you're passionate about, Find your biggest pain and make that your passion. And I sat, it sat with me for like, I don't know, seven months. And then one day I was like, I had just jerked off and I was like, man, this is my biggest pain. And I was like, oh, I remember this, <laughs> this quote from Jarrett. And so finally I was like, huh, what if I just try to help people? Because it's like, I don't want to ever jerk off again. I want to be known as the guy who doesn't jerk off, doesn't watch porn, and so there we go. And now I'm kind of doing it, and it seems like you – I want to ask your story. What was your biggest pain, and, and why are you driven to do this and help men online? Well, you know, what's really strange is I, I also remember see, going on your page, and I, I saw a post where you decided to talk about porn in your friend group, and it was kind of like a taboo thing. You know, and you were like, you know what, maybe if I bring it up, that could spark something. And then you said, hey guys, I have a, I, I struggle with using porn a lot and jacking off. And then it like chain reaction, like the next person was like, oh yeah, me too. And the next person was like, oh yeah, me too. And then we're all having this open conversation because you injected it first, right? So in my life, I've always been somebody who's had a high awareness, a self-awareness, but also an awareness of what's going on around me. When I was a lot younger, Growing up, becoming a teenager, getting older, I didn't really have all the answers to why things were happening. I just knew that things were happening. I would see beautiful, sure. positive things in life, but I would also see really troublesome and painful interactions with people, my family, this weird situations that didn't add up. You know, you know, when you're a kid, you're innocent. You feel like, hey, this, everything should just be good. Like, we should all just love each other. Things should be great. Everything should make sense. And it seemed yeah. logical to me. So when things didn't add up in that manner, I was dumbfounded. So going back to like the pain aspect, I always wanted to know why things happened exactly the way they did. Why are people this way? Why do they talk this way? Why do people have relationships and interact this way? Why is the world the way that it is? Why am I the way that I am? It's like my blueprint. So when people ask me like, why do I do this kind of work? I really don't have another option. I tell people all the time, your purpose is not something you do. It's not an activity. It's how you are built to show up in the world and how you perceive and how you think that's different from others. The very manner in which you perceive life is your purpose. You have an angle, a slice of the pie that other people don't have. And for me, it was always to figure out how and why things worked. That's just my lens. I took it to everything, to my own self, to my schooling, to my activities, to, you know, my, my woman, my relationship, to life itself. That's why I'm spiritual now, because I just want to figure everything out. So I, I'm on this path of figuring things out, and the person who seeks, the answer will be revealed to them, you know, like knock and the door mm -hmm. shall open type mm -hmm. of thing. And then the seeker always ends up becoming the teacher at the end of the day, because it's a natural progression. It's like two sides of the same coin. So I'm always the guy who wants to know why things work. And if I don't understand that, I feel like something's fundamentally wrong with me. Everybody has that one aspect or quirk where if they feel like, if I don't have this, my entire reality is gone. Like, like 
effed up. Mm. So because of that, I know that this is how I'm built. I couldn't turn it off if I tried. I have to know why everything works, man. I have to at the highest level. It's just who I am. So because that's my 24-7 thought process, I just decided to turn that into a line of work because I was going to do it anyway. People would ask me for advice anyways. I would be mentoring people anyways. So I'm like, all right, well, if this is the one thing that I cannot turn off, it makes sense that I make this a stream of income because it makes me feel purposeful, makes me feel alive. It helps other people. And like, it takes no effort on my part. It's just who I'm built to be. So why not make money off of something that takes no effort on your part? That's the way that I look at it. If something's aligned with yourself sure. and your purpose, that means you will be able to sustain it indefinitely. Yeah. It's a good answer. I like that. Appreciate it. Don't have another option. I really don't. Yeah, it's interesting. I've tried other options. And it's just, every time, it just causes massive suffering. A lot of times, people, like a lot of my clients, are trying to figure out what they're trying to do and how to think and how to move how to move forward with their life, choose a career, what have you. There's a lot of different ways to, to dig it, but I'm just like, hey, what's that part of you that you cannot turn off? No matter how hard you try, it's so fundamental. Get acquainted with that. Notice it. Make space to notice it if you just don't know. And then that will start leading you to the path. Yeah, it's really interesting. And when did you first notice that you were kind of a mentor like figure to people when did you like were you a mentor to even older people in your life i'm just curious yeah a lot uh, a lot more recently i have some older clients one of my one of my best friends now he was he's like just turned 58 earlier this year oh sure yeah and uh he's just like he's like he's like a like a wise grandpa you know what i'm saying he's a cool dude mm -hmm. you know childlike at heart but been through some crazy stuff and he, you know we just he came to me and my business partner back in the day so that he could develop his coaching business and so that he could figure out how to align himself in what he was he was already coaching but he wanted to like take it to the next level and we taught him about how to do the inner work he was already really good at self-discipline and personal development there's just some small internal tweaks some people just don't know what they don't know just like us we don't know what we don't know that's why it's wise to have sure. somebody who is in sort of a position that you would like to be in so they can mentor you but when i first oh, sure. learned i don't know i'm sorry I'm, bro i'm serious i cannot i don't know when this happened i don't know when this happened i just feel like hmm. i've been on a roller coaster of events that led me to this point all I know is that I cannot stop seeking the answer. And therefore, speaking the message was rather natural. And the more I spoke the message, because like, this makes sense to me, I just wanted to be like, hey, man, if this is going on, and then this is why, and then this is the answer, and then this situation. And just extrapolating that is what causes me to attract people to want to know what's up. When you really understand what you're talking about, you don't really have to think that hard. People are always wondering, hey, how do I do public speaking? How do I uh, speak in front of large amounts of people? How do I sound confident? How do I show up a certain way? It's really like if you really know what you're talking about and you really mean it, you don't have to worry about the particulars. They will fall into line because you're sure. speaking what truth is. And the truth is what cuts through. So I'm like, my truth was just speaking how I thought and how I figured things out. I wasn't always so confident mm. as I am now, but I always had that essence of like, this is what it is. I just put my whole life in this. In. So they can, people can feel my reality. They can feel that I mean this. And then they're more inclined to listen. That's, that's really, I think, what it is. I remember one time I was in high school. I was just mm. chilling at the park next to my school after, uh, after class had got out. Sitting there at the bench. Some girl maybe a year younger than me, walks up, just sits next to me. She starts telling me her life story and about, like, this, <laughs> like the stuff that happens. And I'm, and I'm just here, like, listening, like, okay, cool, what's going on? Oh, I'm asking her questions, trying to help her out. And then once that conversation is over, I'm like, this doesn't even know me. She just comes up here and starts like, I just feel like I can trust you. That's what she said. It's like, I just feel like I was supposed to tell you. I don't know. I just feel like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. God's just throwing signs at me. Universe is like, here you go. Sure. Here you go. And then after all that time, I just got the message. Like, hey, stop messing around. You have a job to do. This is what you are. 
take it seriously. Mm. And I think while acknowledging that and consciously going after it intentionally, that's what really catapulted my journey. Interesting. Man, that's a great story. And when you were saying, just bringing it back to the whole, when you're saying something that is true, you don't always have to be hyper prepared or scripted because when it's true, it will fall into place in a sense. It's like, I like whenever I'm doing a presentation or a solo podcast or anything that that I've been journaling about or I'm up in front of a class or something, it's like I don't always – I don't have to script it. I don't have to look at my notes because it's something that I just am feeling. And it's so interesting how humans work where it's like well, if you're able to speak about something that you're passionate about, things will fall into place and it's almost like a magic. It's like, I don't even know what I would explain it as, but it's like, as you're speaking, like right now, I don't fully know what's going to come out of my mouth, but I do know that I can trust myself and that I say things that are true and that I, I normally try to say things humbly with love and both that kind of combo normally, like those are kind of my two goals. Like I don't want to sound too arrogant and I also want to say it in a way that like will help someone and help myself and when you kind of have some axioms that are kind of like cemented mm -hmm. you don't always have to worry about what you're saying i don't know if you know what i mean but it's like it's almost as if i can once i get put those planted into the ground i can just speak confidently because i know deep down i care about people and i do care about what's true and i really like helping people so yeah i can fully relate there i really like that bro that's the essence of what it means to do any of the things that we're up to your genuine character is such that you don't have to trip off the extremities like isn't it so beautiful isn't it so powerful and going back to your domain of like hey stopping porn and becoming a better man financially becoming more fit becoming more of a strong character and then getting women also and understanding relationships do you know how mm. good it feels to not have to trip off of how women perceive every little thing you do. Because in the beginning, we're all trying to learn the game, right? I remember in high school going on YouTube, <laughs> being like, how to get girls, you know? I, I remember trying, and a lot of that actually helped catalyze my spiritual awakening. However, hmm. I realized that a lot of these tactics and strategies for game, and even good stuff like inner game, inner game is always more appealing to me than outer game. For people in the community that mm. understand what this is, they get what this is. You know, so when when I'm trying to like when I was trying to learn how to be well with women, I was trying to focus on my exterior too much, focusing on how I was showing up, how I talked, what kind of things I said, how I flirted, tonality, stuff like that. You know, sure. but the reality is. Women do not relate or find you sexy based on the actions you portray. It's not that. It's more so that your actions and how you show up as a man are related to who you're being right now, who you really are. That's why, you know, the same way that rich people get richer and poor people get poorer, it's the same reason why men who are good men have good things that happen to them. People who are of not good character will have things that are not good happen to them. And men who are attractive to women always get more women. Not because of what they do or what they say. They can usually say whatever they want. They can do almost anything and they'll still be attractive because of who they have become. Their very essence and their character is such that they're a good man, a strong man. Somebody who knows who they are and also does not have to be in their head tripping about what am I going to say? How do I sound confident? How's my body language? Am I leaning a little bit too much to the left right now? Am I looking directly into her eyes? Or maybe I'm looking too hard. Fuck, now she knows that I'm thinking. Fuck, fuck, fuck. You know? And just doing that mental loop. Like, you can erase all of that by saying it's not about the girls. I want the girls to like me, but I don't even like me. Why? Because I don't respect myself. I don't know who I am. I don't feel comfortable in my own skin. Once you solve that problem, once you know who you are, you filter out all the things and people that are not meant to be in your life, especially the hmm. women. There's a lot of men who try to go chase women and they end up attracting the wrong girl. They might get results, but it'll be the wrong person. It'll be the wrong vibe. So you can circumvent every problem in life of attracting the wrong persons and the wrong circumstances and the wrong stuff just by doubling down on who you are. And that's, I think, what I do and what you do also is helping men tailor themselves properly so that we could be who we're supposed to be, what our blueprint is. And once you understand your unique blueprint as a man or as a person, 
everything in life clears up. You have a system that's so, so foundational to your soul, to who you are, that nothing can ever shake it. Life becomes a lot less scary when you know why things are happening. That's why I do it. That's why we all do it. We just want to figure this out. Oh, oh, for sure. I, I really agree. Like, if you're pretending it in any scenario, I'd say most people are going to be able to tell, even if they don't have a great sense of awareness. Like, the people that have a great sense of awareness are going to be seeing right through you and being like, this guy's just a, this guy's a joke. But one of my biggest mantras for myself, I don't know if everyone should live this way, but it's like ultimate vulnerability. I like to just wear my heart on my sleeve pretty much whenever and not in a kind of like an assertive jerk way, like, oh, you're fat, but more uh, <laughs> I'm going to say what's on my mind too. <laughs> and I'm also going to <laughs> vulnerably explain how I'm struggling and how it's hurt me in the past and how, yeah. I used to have hamburgers somewhat regularly and I just would feel horrible and yeah. I like eating things that make me feel awesome and I don't know. I just – I think <laughs> when people are vulnerable with each other in a way that – I don't know. I think you can actually get to the root of people's problems when the more vulnerable you are in some sense. I don't know if you know what I mean but it's like with the problem of porn, it's like – most guys I talk to have told zero people. And to me, that's almost crazy because like I told so, so many people before I even had this podcast, but my first episode on this whole thing was the morality of pornography. And it was like an, uh, like 45 minutes of me just, so I watch porn and I've been watching for a long time and I'm trying to figure out how to quit. And <laughs> this is my first episode <laughs> and it really did help. I was like, Oh my word. And I got like 50 texts from all these people like, oh, no one has the balls to do that, and you really helped me. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I guess that's me. <laughs> Are you typically the guy that goes first in life? Like, if you see, like, is that, does that seem like your pattern? Hmm. It's actually, sometimes I'm a negotiate for others kind of guy, like, eh, you go ahead, you go ahead, I'll open the door, you go in. But... I'm really normally the first person to critique me or the first person to open up about my problems. Yeah. I'm not always the fastest to be like, yo, you don't look like you're doing the right thing. The first thing I'm going to do is like open up about the thing that I did wrong to kind of relate it to them to, so that if they're really f seeing what I'm saying, they'll catch up on it or like – I don't know if you know what I mean. I'm I'm actually kind of more of a agreeable person who – really will let other people kind of go first. But when the time's right, I might be like, I got to go first. Yeah. I don't know if you know what I mean. I 100% do, bro. It's not always. And what I meant by that, I actually, that came out the wrong way. When I said go first, I didn't mean it like in a arrogant, like me first kind of way. I mean more like mm. the, uh, not uh, sacrificial lamb is a bit too much. But I mean like the mm. leader who will put himself on the line first. I feel like you're the kind of guy that will lead by example and go first. Like, you talked about porn, like, when nobody else was. Like, you went first. You literally started the trend. And it was out of good intentions. It wasn't like, look at me, I'm holier than thou, because I'm talking about my problems. Mm. You know? For sure. I feel like your character is, like... I, that's one of the reasons I really respect you. And because you're vulnerable and you're honest, bro, I can tell that you really mean what you say. So it's like just so so much purity comes through you. That's why I think that's why you have like so many great people coming on here, being your clients, coming on your podcasts, and just like the type of following that you attract. It's just so cool. Like everybody in your sphere that I've seen seems pretty fucking cool. Like that's because you're cool. Like you're like the the person that attracted all that together. So you're you're whatever hey, it is man, you're doing, well, you're doing it good. Thanks. Yeah, and. I kind of want to talk about that idea of like you're going to attract or detract people in just being yourself and that's actually really optimistic oh man these people aren't attracted to me that's a great sign that's actually just like a beautiful sign that you there's no need to really associate with them they have their own people go be you and the right people come to you and i love when you kind of related that to the women dimension where it's like 
be your authentic self no matter what. Don't try to pretend to be this or pretend to be rich or pretend to be whatever. It's like that's just going to attract low quality women. That's going to attract women that aren't themselves either. And it's like good luck on that relationship. And yeah, I got really lucky. I don't even think luck. I just was being myself and a woman just came up to me at I go to engineering school because I'm kind of analytical on the other side of this. Yeah. And I was on a phone call with a potential employee and she was like – she was asking, oh, so are you, are you looking for – are you getting a job? And I was like, no, actually, I'm trying to provide a job. And she was like, oh, and I don't know. The convo kind of started and I was like, hey, do you want to hit the sauna sometime? Because like <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> And she was like, the sauna. And I'm like, that's We're getting a hot and steamy night. first like, thing in the day, yeah, it's girl. Like, <laughs> it's vulnerable. It's open. We're, yeah, I, I put myself out there. I, you and I, so I asked her a few bastard. times, like, let's, let's go in the sauna. And she was like, okay, fine. Yeah, let's do it. And ever since then, it's been a year since we started. And honestly, I see it probably not ending because of the energies, if you know what I mean. Like, I can just feel that it's the right thing. I, I don't have to pretend to people like I wasn't trying to hide her. Like in previous relationships, I'd like not even always want to even bring her around. Cause it was like, I could almost feel that they would feel that I wasn't fully committed or that right. I wasn't fully interested. Now it's like, this is my woman and I'm going to show her off. I'm going to just hold on to her yeah. and she is mine and everyone knows it. And I don't know that I just, I'm a huge fan of, I don't know. I think re the relationships you can build are some of the most deep things in life. And it seems like I, w I want to ask you, like, how did your relationship start? How can you tell that the woman you're with is the woman for you in some sense? Oh, it's a long story. It's a long story. But I will preface it with this. Hmm. Because I was I started watching porn around like 12 years old. Like Ooh, religiously, yep, similar. I um, I was exposed to sexuality really early on in life before I was even ten years old, accidentally, and just like through media and TV and internet and shit like that. I had a very distorted view of what true love and what real sexuality actually is, as many of us are, and it influenced me in a really really negative way. I didn't see how detrimental it was until it was actually almost too late. You know, I, uh, watching porn gave me an unfair, uh, unfair outlook on what women are, how women should behave, how men are, how men should behave, and also expectations. I stopped thinking of women as a person, just like me. I started thinking of them more like objects, and whether it was conscious or subconscious, it didn't, it didn't add up well. Especially when it came to my relationships and my desires for, like, you know, sex. Especially, like, growing up in high school. The woman I'm actually with now is the only woman I've ever been with, ever. And, mm. like, first kiss, lost my virginity too, And, like, I'm going to marry this girl now. So, I never thought that that would be me. I thought that I would be Mr. Player. I thought I would be getting a bunch of girls, you know. Like, I'm, I'm capable of that. But I thought that's what I wanted. I thought I wanted multiple women in rotation. You know how it is. You know, you know. I thought I wanted to like go travel the world and just go fuck bitches around the clock. You know, just around the world. I thought that was the way to go. And that seemed fun. It was really appealing to my lower self. I really realized that the reason I went that way and why I wanted those things is because I felt starved. I felt really starved of true intimacy. I felt starved of validation from women. I felt starved of my own self-esteem, so I thought that I could make myself feel better. And mind you, most of this is unconscious. I didn't have these conversations with myself. I'm just analyzing it from hindsight. I was actually really, really feeling lack and deficiency based on who I thought it was, what my identity was, what I thought women meant to me, what I thought I meant to women. And every man, I don't care who you are, every man biologically derives his worth from how what kind of woman he has, how many women he has, how women treat him. How men respect you and how women treat you. Like that is how men derive their value. Just what it is. And I didn't obviously know all that. So I'm like, oh yeah, I should just go be, you know, be a hoe. Should be a man hoe. I thought that was a good idea. Mm. 
But thing is, God, because I was always a spiritual person first, I was committed to myself and understanding and wisdom. Like I was always committed to that. So it was enough of a balance to where when I was about to go down a really, really, really dark road of man whoring and things like that, I actually got saved. God put a woman in my life whom I did not mm. treat very well for the first couple of years and who I didn't give the respect that she deserved for the first couple of years. If it wasn't for her coming into my life and changing my my ability to feel women and to, to feel like I could be loved, the, the, the way that she loved me and how it opened up to the relationship and the place and the person I'm in now, if it wasn't for her, I would not be who I am, not in not in business, not on the world stage, not in my purpose, not even in confidence. Like I, I can't even imagine what I would be. I can't. So I got with her when I was 16 years old. It's been a wow. long time. And how would I know this girl is the one? I actually didn't. Um, I looked mm -hmm. for all the signs that she wasn't. I, I was like, this is my first little relationship. I'm going to get some experience. Like, mm -hmm. this ain't nothing serious. It's not going to last. That's how I was coming at it. And just be here and just do what I do. But I'm the kind of person that could never actually be like a player or just a man whore. I couldn't do it because I yeah. care too much. I am too deep of a person. And although the idea sounds nice to myself and to my ego sometimes, mm. the idea of being a player sounds really nice, the reality of it is not for me. I would not be able to literally go and stick my dick in another girl, especially if I'm like just meeting her. Like I have a lot of great chemistry with women sometimes and we have great vibes because that's like as a man, like it just kind of happens. But sex is way bigger than just pleasure. So again, being spiritual sure. facilitates all of these other understandings. Being self-aware, personal development allows you to see these things as it happens or in hindsight. So it's the biggest denominator. If you want to figure out your women's situation, personal development, purpose, and spirituality, that's what saved my life and kept me on point as I went through this journey so I could adjust properly. Anyways, long story short, I'm with this girl. I don't treat her with the respect that she deserves. I don't give her enough of my attention as she deserved until I found out later through multiple wake-up calls that this woman is the one for me. You need to stop being a bitch, Neeraj, because you're just being a little bitch. You're just being scared of intimacy, scared of being loved, scared of being seen. And because of that, you're keeping her away. She wants to love you. You're not letting it happen. And you can see this. You're being a bitch. You're being weak. That literally is what transitioned me into, I want to be a player, I'm not committed to my girl, I don't know how long this is going to last, to I don't care what happens, I'm going to give my all to her no matter what, and what happens, happens. As long as I know that I didn't give less than 100. I don't care if she leaves me. I love her to death. I, I think she will never leave me. If she does though, I'll be okay with that, so long as I don't have to regret my my actions later. If she leaves... But I didn't try my best. That shit would tear me up. But if she leaves and I put everything and I gave all of myself on the table all the time, I overcame every weakness, I decided to be greater. I'm okay with that. I can live with that. I'd have a pure heart. But it's the fact that I knew that I wasn't. And I wasn't really living up to my myself and who I should be. So... Um, that's how I knew my girl was the one, in a nutshell, God, obviously, life, my particular life path just kept showing me, but it's also, you will seek what you find, if you think your girl is the one, if you're trying to find signs for her being the one, you will find it, if you f look for signs that are trying to be like, she's not the one, you shall find it, if you look for both, you shall find it. You need to be grounded in a place within yourself that is always seeking truth and is always serving a higher purpose so that you have a proper orientation to life. Many men are trying to figure out answers to their life from a flawed point of view, which is distorted and cannot see the truth. So when you're trying to find the truth, you don't find the answers. Not because there's something wrong with life, but because there's something wrong with how you're looking at it. There's something wrong with your perception. And most people don't even know that this is a thing, which is why you need mentors who know that this is a thing and they've been through this so they can walk you through it. If that's not there, you know, go on YouTube and do your best. But really, it helps to have somebody who's been around the block. So 
it's been a large story. My woman is the only reason I am who I am now. And she is the reason why I've catapulted my business, my confidence, myself, con- like everything, everything. I cannot stress this. Mm-hmm. The most important thing to a man is the woman he keeps. And you don't really know who you are as a man, a real man, until you've been in a long-term relationship with a woman you love and that you would die for and live for. You don't know who you are. It'll push you to the largest extent. And the last thing I'm going to say about that, most men want to be man whores and have a bunch of girls because they're scared little bitches. Because they know, deep down inside, that having a committed relationship is the hardest thing that you'll ever do in your life. Harder than your business. Harder than anything. Harder than working out. Harder than dieting. I don't care. I and need endeavor is secondary to being in a committed, deep, vulnerable relationship with one person. Long term. Nothing is as difficult as that. Nothing. But the most difficult things in life are also the most fulfilling. And that's why it's so hard. Because you can't enjoy the heights of heaven without the fires of hell. It just comes with the territory. Mm. Going back to universal law. That's why we can withstand the fire. We can withstand the pain. Because we are grounded in something larger. We understand the laws that life works in. The laws that God has laid out. And we follow it to a T. So we know that when bad stuff happens, it's for a purpose. And we know how to move through it. That's the last thing I'm going to say about that. That was some deep stuff right there. I, I like that a lot. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I think, I think people that are, that are that go down the, the man whore route are lying to themselves and lying to the world and are just making the world a worse place. If you look, think about it, technically speaking, because it's like, what are you doing in doing that? You're searching for just a quick pleasure, and now you're leaving both of y'all kind of low and with no one and so it's like i just i'm with you i i never took that route i've i've only had sex with the woman that i've been with like if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like only twice Mm -hmm. and i've dated two people long term so like i'm not a i'm not saying i'm better than people that are hooking up with random people but it's like (laughs) i think you're right they're doing it in a place of like they don't feel as if they're enough they don't feel as if they have the ability to commit they don't feel as if they have the right qualities to attract the right women or I'm just not sure or it's like but I think you're totally right it is one of the hardest things you could do but it's also one of the things that like I don't know it it sparks a fire under me to just be the best version of me possible like when I'm single sure I'm pretty inspired to just be really just be me and be really good at being me so that I can attract said woman but once I have the woman and she's supportive and super you know i guess loving and caring of my journey and where i want to go mm-hmm. it's almost like i have I, there's a speed boost attached to that fire and yeah i'm just I, I totally agree man i i think people are scared of committing to one person like in our world where you can just find 100 people on the phone mm-hmm. a million people on the phone mm-hmm. And there's always going to be the one chick that seems to look better or seems to, I don't know. There's all these kind of shiny objects in this kind of world that we have. And it's like, whew, when you, but I think that's where you almost just have to sit back and be like appreciative for what you have. Because once you realize all the things that you have in your relationship, you're less apt to be searching for something else. It's like. Like a beautiful quote of like, you know, the grass might be greener over there. It's because you're not watering it here. Start watering and your grass will be green. Start cultivating your garden. And so it's like I'm a huge fan of this idea of like don't just give 50-50 in the relationship. Then you're just going to have an average relationship. Mm-hmm. You got to give 110, 120% and you're going to have the most beautiful relationship possible. Yeah. When my woman, I know she's coming over, I'm going to walk outside, meet her, carry her bags in. Help her this, do this for her, make sure she has all the clothes she needs because she's a lot colder than me and I keep my place kind of cold. And I'm going to make sure she's fill, fully warm and I'm going to make sure that she's fully, I don't know, loved, if you know what I mean. No matter what, I if I can feel that in the text that she's kind of sad or whatever or kind of stressed, I might just call her right there just to see how she's doing and check in. I'm, I'm not going to sit back and be like, eh. 
eh, whatever. Uh, it's I care deeply, and so it's like I want to give it my all, and and then I think in return she'll give her all to me, and it's just there's no resentment, there's no like oh he's not giving his full, so I'm not going to give my full effort, and so eh, I just can feel how that can happen. But but yeah, man. I honestly, you've triggered me to say so many things. I have like three things I want to say. Heck yeah. <laughs> Number one, a woman will multiply whatever you give her. This is her nature. Mm. Like mm. on a very basic level, you give her some, some sperm and she turns it into a baby. Multiply, you know? <laughs> you give a woman bad vibes, she will take it worse than you could ever imagine. You give a woman some great vibes, she will love you without end. Infinitude. And that shit is scary mm -hmm. for men because they must learn how to properly orient themselves to give the proper vibe and be in control. Most men mm. don't do committed relationships because they are not comfortable with taking charge of their life and their relationship. As a committed man, you have to be in charge of managing your state of being, your emotions, your finances, everything, and your woman's. Like, your life ain't your own no more, boy. Like, no. you are responsible for another person. And that's preparing you for fatherhood. Also, the reason why I stopped looking around at other girls at better, as better uh, options is because I realized sure. at one point or another, I will have to settle down if I have, want to have a family. I will have to have a wife. Like, I want kids. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, either I can... Like, here's what will happen. All right, Neeraj, look at yourself here. Okay, you can hop from your girl that you have now to the next best girl, and... The next, then the next best girl, and then the next best one, the next best one. And then, well, what about when it's time to have kids? Well, you can't hop around anymore, right? Oh, shit. But, like, what about when stuff inevitably gets hard and difficult and you guys get on each other's nerves and you feel like it's not going to work? Most men, as soon as they feel a deep sense of difficulty in their relationship, they will leave or recluse or turn away. Most people, I would even say. And I realize that a relationship's purpose is to give you an outlet to go past your limitations. You literally love a woman so much, and you love your relationship so much, that you are okay with the process of death, and hurt, and pain, struggle, betrayal, all endless suffering, so that you can become the person that is capable of withstanding it. This is why women are really always, they say women test men or women put the fire under men, women ex make men. This mm. is the reason. The men grow through challenge so they can rise to a higher level. They can check their behavior, stop that, and then operate from a higher level, which then makes women happy. So when you're operating at the proper level, your woman's always happy. Whenever I'm messing up in myself and I'm less than good, less than 100, that's when my relationship starts failing. That's when my girl starts acting weird towards me. Her senses know I'm not operating at a high enough vibration, at a certain particular frequency that belongs to me. Therefore, it's her mm -hmm. nature, whether she knows it or not, to make me feel pain to recognize that I am not at my top. And then my job is not to get mad at her, but to look at myself and be like, oh, I'm actually not at my peak. Let me go back and let's do this. In this moment, let's reorient. Let's come from a higher place. And that's the thing. It's like a lot of men just like, ah, this girl is too much work. She's always bitching and complaining. And, you know, I don't want to deal with this. And, you know, I don't know. The sex isn't good anymore. And, you know, we don't have fun. And I don't feel connected. Like, bro, that's your fault. That's your fault. That's all 100% your fault. So when you, most men, they just go hop around from girl to girl and date around. Nothing lasts. It's not because people aren't good people. It's just that you're all little bitches. Like, that's all it is. Like, they're all just weak people who aren't willing to be vulnerable and go down to that place and really feel some pain. Only a woman you truly love, you will go through hell for that's it. Mm. Like if you don't, and if you don't, this is why people don't fall in love because they know that once they do, mm. they'll be really soft and really mushy. And now these these cultures calling real love as simp's. And trust me, there's some real simp ass mm. beta people out here, the men who are weak, right? But there's a difference between sure. a simp and then a true romantic soft person. It's like it's not oh, it's not sure. like I can't be hard. It's not like I can't be masculine. But when I'm with my girl, I'm a little pile of mud sometimes. And I like that shit. And so yes, does she. Me too. I like that shit. You know? <laughs> if you can't be a lover boy, what the fuck is it all for? 
If you if you can't be a lover boy, what the hell? Like you think you're supposed to be hard all the time? Again, the internet confuses people with no real life experience. Mm -hmm. People are drawing conclusions mm -hmm. from the wrong place. You need to get around people who know what the fuck is up. <laughs> you get, get around people and only take advice from people that you would trade places with. Only take advice from people that you would switch with. If you wouldn't be in their position, don't take advice from them. Because they're only talking from their position. Hashtag Wes Watson. You should probably check out Wes Watson if you haven't already. Who's this? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's Wes about Watson. to change your life. It's about to change your life right now. This is like... There we go. Yeah, so... Whew. My God, there's so much stuff. I get into this mode when I start speaking that I start channeling a, st a stream of consciousness. So, it's like, this is why I do what I do. I get so high off of speaking the truth and stuff like this mm. that there is nothing in life that could get close to it. That is like nothing in life. There's no drugs. Like I, also, I stopped drinking four weeks ago. Best change of my life so far. Nice. And um, I can tell like I also like smoke weed and tobacco. That's on the way out now too. I can feel it. Nothing mm. makes me feel as happy anymore. <laughs> Alcohol is keeping me at a low, low point. So, yeah. Yeah, things are happening fast. I will... But man, like I want to, oh, I want to return the mic back to you. This is, I'm, I would just keep going. Like I just need to stop real quick. <laughs> That's great, man. Real quick, what are you holding, just so I can like, or are you just? Oh, what am I holding right now? Well, the yeah. my window is open behind me. The daylight is kind of blocking my light that's in front of me, so I'm like pulling it oh, forward. Oh, dang! You know what I'm gonna do? Fair enough. I was. I'm like... gonna close my blind. Yeah, go for it, man. Oopsies. Just because I see you straining, and I'm like. Right, heck yeah! So it's so much better. So, I yeah, just man. did that earlier. Hey, bro, that's all good. But I was like, man, is he holding the camera? No, the camera's there. You know, I was just trying to think. But yeah, man, I yeah, I think it's most people are kind of weak these days. I shouldn't. I don't know. It's easy to say we so were too are weak, but like we were too. Yeah, everyone everyone starts off as kind of like mm, everyone looks back and is like. Oof, or hopefully they look back and go oof because they've grown. Some people that are stagnant may not look back and yeah, and cringe like, in the oof same right way. <laughs> yes, yeah, always an oof. <laughs> where, but I think this is where it's like I don't know. I I could bring this in where it's like tiny changes over the span of even just a few weeks can just truly catapult you. It's like. Adding tiny changes into your life, whether that's just, well, you know, the classics such as gymming, eating the right food, con stopping watching porn, uh, maybe building some way to make money. Like, but like even just tiny things, like the way you just talk and acknowledge people. If you if you go through life and and kind of just, I, I guess this is my perception of it. When I'm walking through different places, sometimes people recognize me because of what I do and whatnot. I go to the gym and they, oh, Harley, what's up? I sometimes, I try to like give my full self slash, even if it's for a short period of time, I try to like acknowledge, give them that time of day for a little bit. Even like I can even say I have five minutes, I have two minutes to talk kind of thing. But I try to like give my attention to someone because it's just... That's who I am. I actually would feel a little bad if I just was like, they were like, how's it going, Harley? And I was like, hmm. And then just kept walking. Yeah. Like, that's just not my nature, really. Yeah. Sometimes it can, like, suck time from my day. But that's where I've learned, like, hey, man, I have, like, two minutes to talk. And then I have to, like, commit to that two minutes. You know what I'm saying? But it's just what I'm saying here is, like, I think I don't exactly know how this relates. I just was thinking of how, like, I don't know. There's like this – I think some men really do – like I, my girlfriend says this to me a lot. She's like, Harley, men admire you. They love how vulnerable you are. They love how you're a leader. They love how you are able to put yourself out there. Most men are so scared to do that kind of thing and they just want to talk to you. They just want to gleam some thoughts off you. They just want to feel acknowledged by someone they respect. Yeah. And – I'm not trying to say I'm like so good because I really am not. But you are though. I just happen to – I put myself on the internet, which is just a weird thing to do. But I do it and I consistently do it. And even though I don't have that big a following, I know with time I will. And I know with time that I'm going to impact the world in ways I may not even fully imagine. But what I'm trying to say is, is like I think 
every man can get to a place of being respected, acknowledged, and just loved in some sense by other people. It's just by becoming to a position of like, man, I actually do respect myself. I have came into a position where it's like, wow, I actually, if someone asks me what I do, I can proudly explain it, even though it's kind of a long story. If someone's truly interested in talking about it, I'll be fully vulnerable. But like, I think this is, this is like a quality that I think really puts other people above other people, which is the quality of asking questions, deep questions. Honestly, bro, I, I got to tell you, like, uh, in no uncertain terms, and I'm not doing this to be, like, facetious, like, I really mean this. I hope you acknowledge, this is just pure objectivity, like, I also seem to have a problem with acknowledging how objectively dope of a person I am. And it's because, like, the reason why I know so much stuff why I can perform at certain levels and why I drive to seek out wisdom and stuff like this is because I feel an inherent sense of deficiency. Hmm. I, I feel like I must strive to understand and to fill myself and to become whole. That's why my whole thing is perfection is possible. Hmm. Perfection is possible because it's a real thing. However, it's like me feeling imperfect, which would then have the the desire to seek perfection. But the thing is, on the road to perfection, you are going to experience moments of complete bliss and moments of complete hell. You're going to experience like performance and output and really good productivity. And you're going to experience stagnation. Mm. It's a road of ups and downs to the journey where you can maintain perfection or maintain a perfect state of being. But even that, the whole journey of the ups and downs is perfect too. God does not make mistakes, and there is no mistakes in God's universe. Everything is happening on purpose. There is no accidents. Mm. That's the foundation of all spiritual belief and all truth. That's the foundation for why anything happens. The universe is so perfect, perfectly ordered, perfectly synchronized in every single way. And if we live in that universe, that means by extension, we're perfect too. The perception and how you view yourself can be such that you don't see the perfection. But that doesn't mean it's not there. So I want you to know in no uncertain terms what you're doing here, who you are, and why you're here is perfect. The person that you are is truly admirable. That's why I wanted to reach out to you. Just as a friend, like I don't care if we never did mm -hmm. this. I'm happy to know you, bro, because I want to have people like you around me in my life. And people like your girl can see that probably more than you can. Possibly. And I just need you to know that shit. Hey, thanks, man. It means a lot. Yeah, it's... I think I, I've i just been built in... What's built into my being is this humility sense of, like, I still have flaws. I still am not awesome in all the ways. I still have a lot to learn. I still have all this growth. I still have... I don't, I'm not the person who will ever, pretty much, I will never go off and start explaining about my life unless someone asks. That's what I'm trying to talk about in this sauna where it's like, if I, I will, I'm always the starter when it comes to a combo. So how's it going? What, what do you do? What, what was your workout? Who are you? What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. And if. You know, they'll talk about themselves and I'll be interested for four minutes, five minutes. But then if I notice that they're just continuing to talk, 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 yeah, I, a combo. I hopefully will <laughs> show them with my vibe that I'm like losing interest. But man, this guy's not getting it. All right. I know that I will just I will either have to interject about me or I'm just going to have to just hear him talk for the next seven minutes in this sauna. But I, what I'm trying to get uh. to is like. I appreciate the people I appreciate the most in my life are the people that are willing to ask about me because like most people it seems like they see what I'm doing but they don't want to spark the convo about the porn or they don't they see what I'm doing on the podcast and they're like maybe they have this resentment of like man he's doing something more than me and I don't want to bring it up because then it's going to force me to be better and I don't know I just most people I run into it's like they want to talk and they want me as a mentor and they want to like they want to they just explain, explain, explain. 
But it's the people that in my life where I'm like, man, they're asking me deep pointed questions because they deeply care. Those are the people I try to just hold really close. My girlfriend is one of those people, but yeah. my roommate is another one. And I just, I'm curious your opinion of like, uh, I have this pastor friend, like I live with a pastor's kid and his dad's a pastor and I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of Christianity. Some things I'm not the hugest fan of, but just the whole, you know, humility, yeah. being spiritually connected, the things you're saying really resonate with me. But one of his biggest things, he's like, the first thing I do is analyze how many questions is this person asking me? How many deep questions? What's the ratio of question to answer? And if you, you can tell a huge amount from someone based off the questions they ask and how reciprocal they are. It's like you don't want to be around someone that's an energy vampire that sucks all the energy from you and wants to just always blab. That's why I, I try to almost – I tilt so far from being like a energy sucker. I try to just like – I'm not explaining really anything unless you ask, and then I will, but it might even still be short. I wait yeah. for someone to truly dig and pry because I got a lot of layers of just tons of stuff I could explain. But, I know. Yeah. yeah, so so yeah, I'm curious if you've ever thought about like the, the question asking when it comes to like when you're analyzing a person. Yeah. Like that ratio. What I find for myself is that because – when I was younger, I, I don't know if this is something you relate to, but when I was younger, I had less of a socially calibrated filter. Like, mm. I would ask questions and talk to people without really knowing, like, hey, this person may not be ready for this type of conversation. <laughs> when mm. I was younger, I mean, like, you know, like school age, like, you know, younger elementary, middle school, you know, in high school, it became more like formulated. But when I was really young, I would always want to talk a lot. I also want to ask questions and engage people. And I realize that sometimes people just ain't got like the energy to go mm. to the level that I want to go at. Yeah. Like people just like either they're not about it or they don't have the ability. And that taught me a long time ago. It's like, hey, man, listen more than you talk. Mm. Ask more questions and get them to talk. And hopefully they'll give up enough fucks to ask you about what you think. It's true. And that I've realized is two things. One, a fantastic strategy for getting to know people and for getting people to open up to you. That's why mm. I'm such a good coach. But mm -hmm. also, a large degree of that is simply me trying to escape the desire I have to shine my light and to broadcast who I am in the way that I truly am. And my biggest bottleneck in growth as a person and in business and in my relationship is the same thing. It's at the root. It's not being okay with how on fire and how passionate and how deeply I care about what I care about, about what I do and how I think. I am a good person at heart, and I care about people truly, and I'm always empathetic. I can feel it when people are taking me the wrong way. I need to trust in my instincts to know when to dial it back, but I need to push my message forward. I need to express myself better. I need to let people know who I am. Mm. the people who just keep talking and talking and talking and talking and don't stop to ask you a question it's probably because they're just used to being around a family and around people that would interrupt you and talk that mm. would just interrupt you and they're cool with that totally. but people like you and me it's like if you interrupt me while i'm talking i take that as an insult mm -hmm. if i interrupt you when you're talking i feel like you're going to take that as an insult so i make a concerted effort not to mm -hmm. but other people are not wired like that they'll just keep fucking going and yeah. maybe they're less calibrated. Maybe they're more socially calibrated. It don't matter. But I know that for me, I have a duty to myself that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of really showing people how deeply passionate and inspired I am because I got so much heat for it. I got so much rejection from it when I was younger. I got so much... I thought there was something wrong with me. I really felt like there was some fundamentally something wrong with me because I was always too much or too smart or... It cared too much or just not calibrated and I it just made me into a fixer like I can fix myself I can tweak this I can learn the rules I can do that and that's what helped me learn a blueprint like formula for the universe and for my life and how to help people my sense of deficiency is the reason why I felt that I can learn everything about everything but now I'm at the point where I don't have to operate from that level of lack anymore I can actually be empathetic and I could be on fire at the same time. Help people with my message because I have something beautiful. My presence is powerful. 
my soul is powerful. It's here to share its wisdom, just like yours. And I don't want you to be afraid of really putting yourself out there at max level, not even just on the podcast and like in daily life with mm. your girl, with your family, with your friends. Like you're here to set shit on fire because you realize that the world needs changing. People need help. And sometimes they, not sometimes, every time, they need an example of somebody who is living that life. They don't need to be told what to do. They need to experience what it is to see somebody in action who is really living as they truly are. That will inspire them. It might make them uncomfortable a little bit, but people who are ready will be inspired. And that's who you're trying to bring up with you. So question to answer ratio, fuck yeah. It's really important. I ask a mm. bunch of questions. Um, I'm kind of like your guest on the podcast right now. I know I haven't asked you a lot of questions. My bad, but uh, no, bro. That, I mean, this like, is, this is the st this is the style of this. It's, you know what I'm saying? You get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I feel everything's cool, but mm -hmm. in normal sense, like if you and me were just talking, like on the phone, yeah, I'd be asking mad questions, knowing about For your story sure. and stuff. And that's how you can really tell that like somebody can think at a certain level. It's like, oh, they're aware of that level of thinking. Oh, and they're asking about it. Oh, and they worded it properly, and they're precise. Like, oh. So we can both go to that level. Okay, let's Heck fucking yeah. run it. <laughs> and that's that's the stuff dreams are made of. It is. Yeah. I think there's <laughs> nothing more, like, beautiful than, like, I don't know, being at some random wedding or being at a place and then just sparking a combo with someone and being like, oh, wow. Now this one could go deep. This one could be a few hours. <laughs> you know, when you look at the clock, like, I wonder how... Uh, this is going to be a timeless scenario coming up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love those. Getting lost in flow state, right? Yeah. Uh, I know we don't have too much time left. Is there sure. anything in particular? I'm here. I'm good for like literally forever. My schedule is clear. But I know you got to go at some point. But yeah. um, with your audience, what do you like? I really want to like shuttle a message directly to them. Like what do you think mm. is important for your people? What do you think like they need right now? What do you think is important? And I'll find a way to like compliment and piggyback that. All right, sure. So I I created this whole thing because first off, I wanted to I wanted to meet cool people. I wanted to learn about the world. I wanted to build a presence, maybe for financial reasons, but I also wanted to just grow as a person. I started to realize just how many people in life just don't seem really to be on fire about what they're doing. They're working a job that, that they don't like. They are eating things that are making them fat. They're in relationships that they don't like or they're hooking up with random people. There's just so much like brokenness. And I was mm. like, man, this is painful to see. And sometimes I, I, it's not always my place to like – if I see someone's all messed up, it's not always my place right there to be like, yo, your life's all messed up. How about I indirectly talk about it and maybe if you're drawn to it, you can come in. It will start combos and it has started combos. And that was kind of the beautiful thing. I, I wanted to figure out a way to – well, this podcast, I tried to put a lot of you know, somewhat money and whatnot into it to make it kind of more professional. I pay editors. I – try to I post every week multiple clips multiple episodes and like it was sucking up a lot of my income and I was like man I wonder if there's a way I can like like I give to the world so much I spend so much money on this whole thing is there a way that I can and it sounds strange but is there a way that I can help people and make money doing it I've always wanted to be a counselor I've always kind of viewed myself as a mentor to other people and I was like hmm how would I do that it kind of started with the quitting porn. I, that's kind of the niche. But mm -hmm. I almost could totally see myself being the man who's like, I just want to help people along my the three pillars, like health, character development, and finances. And I think porn is kind of the under, not underlying, like, if you're watching porn, it's because your pillars are just completely out of whack. And so it's like, you know, right now some people might be like, I don't want to talk to Harley. He's all focused on porn. I'm not all focused on porn. That's just the one thing I thought of that I, was a huge pain for me that I know that people that are struggling with that have other pillars to fix. And I want to help people put their pillars in line and so that they can be a high-value man, so they can attract a high-value woman by being them. And Yeah, man, that's just – that's kind of my goal. What's your advice or what do you think – like do you think I should just stay in the quitting porn niche or do you think I should broaden it and be more of a – a life coach for men, a male, a men's coach. Like, what, what do you think, I guess? 
I think you already know the answer, my friend. You're way too multidimensional and way yeah. too like you're, you're you're you can't stop at porn simply mm-hmm. for the reason that if you really want to quit porn, you got to fix your life. Yeah. Like you can't just be like I will not watch porn for 90 mm-hmm. days. It doesn't yeah. fucking work. It does. Like the reason we watch porn is cuz we feel a sense of uh, deficiency and addiction and we're choosing purpose. We're choosing pleasure instead of purpose. And the pleasure of porn is just so high and so mm-hmm. immediate and your phone is right mm-hmm. there that it becomes an addictive habit and then like the rest sure. of your life kind of falls apart around it. If mm-hmm. you want to fix the porn situation, you have to fix your life situation. Totally. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a porn problem. You know, like there wouldn't if there like like there's water flowing out of the dam. It's the dam is leaking. The water mm-hmm. isn't the problem. It's the fact that the dam is broken. So. Mm-hmm. You got to fix the problem at the root, and I think that you literally, even if you were just helping men quit porn, like you couldn't do it without being a men's coach. No, yeah, you, you couldn't do it. So even for that reason alone, bro, like help out these dudes in every way that you can. Yeah, and it's funny how like again back to that Mr. Wes Watson, I, you love mm. that guy. Yeah, but yeah. one of the things he says is that because everything is connected and we're like the universe is one being. Your life story is so unique and so you, and it could only be this way. Your your life could mm-hmm. only be this way. The reason why you've had the pains and the struggles you've had is because that is literally what you're supposed to teach other people. The methods you find, the way that you think, and the way that you exited your problems and changed your life is the precise way that other people need from you. Because everybody's different. I am allotted a certain amount of people that I'm supposed to help in this lifetime. You are allotted a certain amount of people that you're allowed to help expand in this lifetime. The thing is, the people that are in your niche, like that God has given to you throughout your years, the people that are supposed to be helped by you will only be helped by you if you stay true to what really worked for you. Mm-hmm. They're not supposed to learn what worked for me if they're your people. They sure. can look, they can learn, they can absorb, but what's really going to make that difference is what you are. Mm-hmm. So whatever, literally take your story, reverse engineer it, turn that into your content, which is what you're already doing, mm-hmm. and then help people by giving them what you actually think. Your genuine mm-hmm. thoughts are actually what they need. Not yeah. even if it doesn't follow the blueprint, it's not exactly what the the way it is, the mainstream way of changing, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know what you need to do, you know what you're about, give people what you really think and you will be fine. Like that is the core right there. Your method, your way, that's what's going to help the most people. Thanks, man. Yeah, that means a lot. It's, I've been kind of thinking like, man, I chose the niche almost just to like, I don't know, I heard this phrase of like, oh, if you niche down, you can attract a certain audience, and even though it's niche, you can capture the market or whatever. But I'm like, uh, I did like four, two two or three months of literally just quitting porn content, and Mm -hmm. I could just feel myself being like, losing energy because I'm not talking about relationships i'm not talking about what i'm not talking about all kinds of things so i've tried to just spin it like i want to help men but if you have a specific problem with porn i will help you with these three pillars like it's like the idea of like let's remove this habit and replace it with habits that will make your life better and turn your life into the life of your dreams i don't know i'm just kind of still working on the idea but the people in the group they know me. They know I, the convo starts at porn, but it, it totally doesn't stay at porn, and it goes other places. I'm trying to see how I rebrand it. You're kind of seeing me in a, just a period of unknown, and I'm willing to admit it, even though people might hear this and be like, why would I go with someone who's unknowing about his path and about how he's going to coach? I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Nobody actually gives a fuck. Like, uh-uh. like they, Because it's always us. We're like... What do other? What do we think about other people? Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go with somebody who doesn't know what's going on. Like just because you don't know your branding doesn't mean mm-hmm. that you don't know what you're about. 
Sure. As long as you keep speaking your truth, that's what you're about. That's what will mm -hmm. attract people. The branding is secondary. That's just organization. Sure. Because like, if you look at my page, I'm not branded at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not branded at all. And the yeah. thing is, I want to be. And at this point in my life, I should be. However, mm. that is not what got me my clients. That's not mm. what that's not what attracted like the universe really replies honesty. It gives you back value if you're really giving it. And if you're giving real stuff out, you're going to get people who understand that with resonate and vibe with that. Sure. For the masses, you can start organizing it so it's easily accessible and that's when you'll start blowing up. That's where mm -hmm. I'm after right now. I have a foundational way of moving. Now I got that foundation, now it's time to scale. Mm. So, I would play around with it, and like we could definitely talk about like you know I'm, I'm not like a branding coach or anything like that, but we could just bounce some ideas, sure, with yeah, like how yeah. we could set that up. Because you're just too dope of a person in too many areas to be like I just do porn, or mm -hmm. I think they say the riches are in the niches, but that's not always true. Yeah. The niche is like the niche could be men's work instead yeah, of porn, exactly. you know, self improvement. Exactly, that's a big niche, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you are the niche. Mm -hmm. That's what I've learned is that we, in order to attain success at the level of awareness that you and me are at, we can't follow what's called 3D or linear standards for how to achieve mm -hmm. success. It's like, first you get one client, then you get two clients, and then you do marketing, and then you get more clients, and then you get better marketing, and then you get more clients, and I just focus on what I do, and I just do what I do. Mm -hmm. No, that's, how, that's linear three-dimensional physics. That's like mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five steps like that. That's how most people think in business. However, mm -hmm. the linear and the three-dimension is secondary to a higher level, which is not linear. The higher level in which we operate at is being aligned to your authentic self. Because your authentic self is the voice of God within. Your authentic self mm -hmm. is what the universe wants from you. That's why you were made in that manner. When you're true to who you are, that's your authentic power, and you will have the weight of the universe behind you. It's like the river flowing behind you. So even if you do something that's off-brand, but you really mean it, that will still be supported by life. Because mm -hmm. it's what came from you, and therefore it came from life. So life supports itself. And then sure. life is always bigger than business. Mm -hmm. Life is always bigger than, you know... Instagram <laughs> and oh, so sure. you, we're playing a larger game and we're in business in order to serve the larger game therefore we don't have to play by the rules of business alone so feel no fear in going into just being who you are and putting out the content that you know you should be putting out speaking mm -hmm. on the things you should even if it's a little bit varied the things will for make sure. sense it'll become organized soon enough I promise for sure Man, thanks for that. That means a lot. Honestly, this could be a good place to end. I wouldn't mind talking off the mic if you're interested. A little Fuck longer. yeah. Oh, whoopsies.